Hello and welcome to the Mercury Vapor Glow channel. Today I will show you this um, nice 70s West German AEG or IG uh, Kleinskoffer, that means small suitcase actually in translation, fixture for 80 or 125 watt mercury vapor lamps. And uh, this fixture is made entirely of aluminum, as you can see. part is uh, made by stamping so it's a uh, stamped aluminum case here that goes all around the fixture it's uh, one piece only and um, what's uh, pretty interesting is that this fixture let's uh, put it down like that and uh, you can see it has only an opening on the bottom that means uh, that this is a post top uh, fixture only and here is a screw where you can um, kind of uh, uh, yeah, mount it to the mast top. And uh, here um, there is an adapter ring only for smaller masts. That's its only function here. And uh, the fixture is built very simple. It has a a bowl that has no refractors, just uh, this kind of diffuser style bowl. And this was the only bowl I know that existed for this fixture. There were no other you like refractor bowls or anything. And uh, yeah, you can turn these um, locks uh, here to, or latches to lock the uh, bowl in place. And uh, there is uh, the other one. And on the other side of the fixture, um, the bowl is held on by a hinge that is not uh, holding on it very firmly. If we undo this latch here again and take uh, the bowl off, it would just fall out actually. If we just continue wiggling it out the fixture like that. And here are two little pinholes that should have a little string or something that would attach here so the bowl doesn't fall out and this fixture unfortunately doesn't have it anymore so this is how it would prevent it from falling down actually it's no more here uh, on the inside we can see there is a reflector for throwing the light really far like this way and uh, this way is it's this is uh, a post of mounting fixture this would be pretty far away from the street actually because it cannot be on an arm so it has to throw the light more uh, forward and uh, also uh, here the socket is not on the side where you usually have uh, it here but it's on the opposite side and this also helps to throw the light uh, on the other side or on the street well, uh, here is a sticker that says it's the IG a number and so on and so forth. It's uh, kind of hard to read, uh, but you can pause the video if you want to read it. It should be possible actually, even if it's uh, upside down right now. And uh, uh, the gear compartment is not separate in this fixture. You can have a glimpse on the gear there and this fixture does not have any capacitor. It just has a choke ballast and uh, no power factor correction at all, actually. Although there is a spot where you could mount a capacitor. And um, last but not least, I have switched it to 125 watts. So we have the bulb here and um, this video will be a little different as the other videos because later we will start it not only with this uh, mercury vapor bulb, the uh, standard mercury vapor bulb here, actually it's a deluxe Osram uh, mercury vapor bulb with uh, a little better color rendering. And then of course you can also run this alternative sodium via locks 110 watts with 
internal igniter or pinning mixture in this case and we will do two warm-up videos for this fixture here let me quickly show the insides of this fixture so what i now have done is i have undone these two screws here the one uh, next to the ledge and the other one next to the other ledge and now i can hinge this open but i have to hold it open because else it would fall down again like that and here you have the ballast it's made by Helvar in Finland and it's uh, it can be used with uh, 80 or 125 watt mercury vapor here is the spot where you could mount the capacitor but there is no capacitor in this fixture actually and that's basically it here is the connector block uh, for this fixture it has to be grounded I haven't grounded it here but it's a fixture that is all from metal so it has to be grounded of course and uh, down there is a original little piece of paper saying that this has been uh, put to or 80 watt as a standard from the factory and if you want 125 watt you have to change it by yourself of course and that's what I did before this video. You just do it by switching the cables here according to the schema on the that's printed on the ballast here. So I guess uh, I have put the fixture back together and let's do the first startup run with the intended mercury vapor bulb, 125 watt, Osram Deluxe. Relatable. You can hear the ballast is humming a little bit. So it's uh, almost two minutes since we started the fixture. It's like almost at full brightness now. I can show you here that where we are looking at right now is where the reflector is sending the most light actually. Here if we go down it's already less light. And this is how this uh, fixture has been designed. Uh, sorry for the flicker. I unfortunately cannot do very much about the flicker in this video. And this bulb is a pretty unused bulb and it's really, really, really bright. And the camera just doesn't work with us here. So the bulb being at full brightness or almost at full brightness. Let's turn it off and I'll be back soon with the startup video of the Violox high pressure sodium 110 watt bulb.
So we now have switched the bulb to the high pressure sodium internal igniter bulb. This bulb is actually not a specifically an internal igniter bulb, but it has the pending mixture in it that lowers uh, the striking voltage that much that this lamp is able to strike on mercury gear without an igniter. And uh, both types existed and uh, actually this is the type that has uh, the pending mixture and has a very rich color change at start. So let's just see. So with the high pressure sodium bulb you of course have worse color rendering but you're not using 125 but only uh, sorry 125 but only 110 watts so you have uh, lesser power consumption and uh, this bulbs last longer than the mercury vapor bulbs and another thing here is that these bulbs of course start cycling at the end of their lives compared to a mercury vapor that would just stay on but be very dim these bulbs would cycle and here the pending mixture is better than the internal igniter because the pending mixture will just extinguish and then go uh, go on again when it gets co uh, cooler again and Compared to the internal igniter that would uh, generate the impulses uh, all the time and uh, uh, straining the ballast very much. This panning mixture does not strain the ballast when it restarts at the end of life, so it's a better solution in this case. But it has the disadvantage of a little lesser efficiency compared to the um, internal igniter bulbs. But uh, overall it's not a very big difference at all. And you can see this bulb gets even brighter than the 125 watt mercury vapor. And this is another feature that this uh, made this uh, replacement bulb so popular in the 90s and 2000s. Then you can just have a high pressure sodium fixture, but uh, using mercury vapor gear and uh, fixtures. It's pretty neat. Now it's uh, almost at full brightness, I think. Uh, after the three minutes so i hope you like this video hit the thumbs uh, up and subscribe if you like street lighting content and thank you very much for watching see you next time bye bye